So we're at the job site and it's a beautiful sunny morning here at the Trio Stackslay Herb Project. So this is the base for the fountain basin to sit on. And we're just digging out a little section over here just so we can move the aqua blocks over a little bit and keep one of the fountains perfectly centered in the window. Ralphie and Jose are just finishing the shoveling. Aaron has the three quarter in the uh, bucket over there. We are gonna lay down a piece of fabric first to keep the soil and the gravel separate, and then the uh, gravel will go on top. So we got a little interesting of a technique here. Yesterday, Ralphie excavated the area out up here and then put in a six inch layer of three quarter inch crushed stone. We're so high up in elevation that as we were raising up, we didn't want to use soil because of settling. So he actually laid the six inches of three quarter inch stone all in here where the basin's gonna go. And then you can see over there right where he's standing. We dug out the three quarter inch stone, threw in a piece of fabric and then backfilled the hole with soil so we could dig it out and get a perfect shape for the pondless vault to sit there. That's what we'll be using here for the pump is the pondless vault and aqua blocks. But this is actually a fountain setup. And we're gonna be doing this a little bit differently. We're gonna be wrapping the blocks like a burrito because we're not digging it down in the ground and then backfilling outside with soil. Uh, so it's ready for planting. Normally you'd be excavating the ground down roughly about two feet, putting your fabric, liner, fabric, and block in the hole. But this is a little different situation. That's why we laid that base down because we wanted to have a solid base because it was disturbed earth and uh, we didn't want much settling. We're starting to do a temporary setup of the fountains. Let's see what it looks like. We have two medium stack slate urns and one large stack slate urn. Using an aqua block, we could set it at different heights. So the three urns are in place. And they're looking really good. We're just gonna have the homeowner come out and check them, make sure they look okay. We are also gotta get a view from inside those windows. But I think it's pretty good just from outside, but uh, let's go take a look inside the house and see what these look like. Before we start mounting up the plumbing and placing rocks around the feature, we wanna make sure it's absolutely perfect. So talking about a renovation, this is the inside of the house. Gotta try to get over these. Uh, they have blown in installation in the walls. So this must be all the extra they're taking away. They just finished this room off. And this is the guest bedroom where you're gonna be able to see the fountains, as well as the whole entire water feature, which now starts up here and travels all the way down below. So now's the time that we have to get the plumbing up through the center of these urns. We're gonna switch from flexible PVC to a hard PVC to do this. Regular old two inch PVC you'd get at Home Depot Lowe's. We're gonna actually run the plumbing right through the aqua block. So we're gonna drill a couple of holes, put an elbow and run the pipe straight up through. I'll show you as we go through these steps. You will need a drill with a hole saw, just like that one Ralphie just put down. And that is uh, a two and a half inch uh, bit there. Ralphie will take the hole saw and drill a hole into the side panel. Your hole should look something like this in the panel, leaving the bottom part for structure and a nice hole to run the two inch PVC through. We remove the second panel and we're gonna repeat that process just like we did before. Those are the markouts for the fountains and the plumbing. And first we're gonna measure the pipe and then I'm gonna show you how this aqua block goes all together. We're gonna have three different pipes running from three urns and they're gonna run into what's called a manifold where we'll have ball valve control so we can control the flow of water to each one of these units. We slipped the PVC pipe into the aqua block and now Ralphie is gonna glue a two inch 90 degree elbow onto the pipe and then we'll glue another piece of pipe into that elbow for a stand pipe in the center of the urn. So what that manifold will do is actually, since these urns are three different heights, it's gonna allow us to control the flow of the water to each urn. The tallest one will need the most pressure, which is the big one in front of me, and the shortest one's gonna need the least amount of pressure. So with three different ball valves, we'll be able to control the flow. And then we'll also be able to make this thing go slower and faster with the pump. So Raphael right now is getting the check valve on the pump from down below, and we'll be able to put that pump into the pump wall and finish off the plumbing. extra flow through them you might see a lot of guys out there they have a lot more water coming over the urn than if you're doing it yourself at home and it comes with the regular plumbing kit so what we do is we actually drill a hole out on the top here you can see there's a white piece of pvc pipe that's coming up from the fountain through the middle and this will slip right over and that's a two inch piece of pipe so we can push a lot of water up through these and have them gushing a lot of water what we do is we drill a hole in this top of the the urns whether they're small medium or large you could do with them all you can also do them with the uh, spheres. And what that allows you to do is put a three watt light in the top of the uh, fountain. It's really, really neat. That gives a lot of light at, at nighttime up as the water's pouring out of the top of this thing. That's what we're doing here. And after I put that light in to hold it in place, I like to put some foam on the backside and then let that harden and you're good to go. 
So when you have stack slate urns and you want to keep them steady, you can either fill the inside with gravel on the bottom. We like to take a couple bags of gravel and place them down in the bottom of the fountain. That way it keeps the fountain sturdy from falling over. And if you ever need to do any maintenance on the fountain, you can get the gravel out very easily. If you put it in there loose, there's no way to get the gravel out later on besides pulling it out by hand or shovel. We're ready to start rocking this thing. So the guys tell me the moment has come that the triple stack slate urn fountain is ready to fire up. So we're super excited to see what this thing's gonna look like. So Ralphie's ready to plug in the fountains. Oh no, we gotta control the ball valves. So remember what I said earlier in the video, we have three ball valves down in those boxes and we didn't turn the, that one down to get the force going. So take number two, Ralphie, plug in the fountain. We're on the final day here at Danchester's and we're just doing a little cleanup. Me and Raph are gonna be working on a couple of things like the electrical post, the foundation overflow. We gotta hide the pipes. We also have to put an overflow on the uh, fountain basin, which will tie into the backside of the biofall. So when the fountains overflow, the water will flow into the biofall, down the waterfall and out the drains of the big pond. So those are the foundation drain pipes we need to hide. Add a couple of boulders, a little bit of gravel, and take care of that. We actually got to cut the pipe to the right a little bit, but that's a pretty simple task for today. Using our trusty Solzol, we cut the pipe, placed a couple rocks and some gravel. The foundation drains are finished. The electric post is complete, and Ralphie mounted the Wi-Fi controller for the fountain pump, as well as the low-voltage transformer for the lighting. All that has to happen now is the electrician runs his conduit, which goes into the basement over to here and then up the post and mounts an electrical box for a permanent electric. Ralphie and myself are moving on to the autofill. So this fountain's gonna have an autofill. It's a small little float valve. We're running a quarter inch poly line right now. And that runs from the spigot down below. Two way splitter. One line goes to the pond down below. The other one comes up here. The Aquascape compact water fill valve, also known as an autofill, comes in a box like this with all the necessary plumbing you need to hook up to a quarter inch line. You'll also need a drill with a three quarter inch bit. To put in the autofill, we need to remove the pump fault lid. We also need to dig away some of the gravel in this area so we can get down and drill a hole for the float valve to mount. So to do the autofill inside the vault with large aqua blocks, you're gonna need a couple of things. A half inch elbow, like I just showed, some half inch PVC pipe as well as some of the stuff in the autofill kit. You're also gonna want a one inch drill bit to fit the pipe through the wall of the vault. And then you're gonna also want a union to be able to disconnect the fill valve in the winter time. We're looking to mount this fill valve about six inches below the top of the reservoir aqua blocks. In order to do that, I'm gonna have to use the PVC pipe elbows and union to make an extension for the autofill valve to sit lower inside the pump vault and to be able to be maintained for the winter months or if ever need to be replaced easy access. So to run the autofill lower down in the vault, we use the union that we talked about before, a half inch elbow, another half inch elbow to make it point outwards. That float is set about six inches below the top of the aqua blocks. We have an elbow on the back side of the vault going into the converter to the quarter inch poly line. Raphael is going to connect that quarter inch poly line and then bury it down along through the mulch here, running down to the hose spigot. Another thing that's really neat about this fountain project is that we're going to be running an overflow from the fountains here, and it's going to drop into the biofall at the top of the waterfall that connects all the way down below. What will happen is if we get tons of rainwater and this basin fills up too much, it'll overflow, run all the way down to that pond. If that pond overflows, there's pipe that runs all the way out to the swamp and the rainwater will be actually dumped all the way out in the distance in the swamp through different pipes and waterfalls and ponds, which is pretty neat. If anything needs to be filled, the rainwater will fill it first before it goes back to nature. Using a piece of Firestone six inch seam tape and a two inch bulkhead, we are able to penetrate the liner with a watertight seal so we can have the water overflow from this basin here into the biofall over there. Using a male pipe thread to slip two inch fitting and a two inch piece of PVC pipe, we'll connect the two together and the overflow will be complete. Once everything's disguised, you'll never know that the overflow is there.